Hey, what's up guys? Brandon here for RC Nightmare, and today I'm unboxing for you the Double XB Sparrowhawk from Thunder Tiger. Now we picked up the MT4 behind me there. We liked it a lot. We wanted to get something else from them. You can see we got another product we'll be unboxing from them coming up. This thing is an all-wheel drive 10 scale buggy. Not the A scale like the MT4 behind me, but we kind of missed our B44. We wanted something comparable. We want to take this to the track and see what holds up. So we picked this up. All-wheel drive, brushless, 2.4. Let's open up and take a look. Here's how she comes out of the box. Got a pretty, pretty decent paint scheme. You know, you don't have to paint it, don't have to worry about anything. That's gonna stand out at the track, no doubt. The buggy. You got a whole bunch of accessories here too with that. See what they give you right away. So we have our standard bag manuals, manuals for the motor speed controller, the radio, some decals for you too, antenna tube. Here we have a small bag of spare parts and tools, some shock accessories. Little things, I can't even tell what half these things are. Some Allens and whatnot. Little things that you'll need for tuning. The radio. Always well protected. This is the same radio that we got with our MT4, so I'm hoping that because I know it has model memory, we should be able to bind this and program this to our other MT4 radio we're using already. It's nice to see they give you such a high quality radio with it. You almost never get a radio that has this many features. I mean, of course, it's got a screen, fully programmable, tells you battery life, EPA, sub trims, reverse, uh, I'll get, again, model memory, digital trims. So this is a three channel radio. It's actually pretty nice. Well, the nicer radios you get with a ready to run car, especially at this price point. This thing is great value for what what you're getting for the price. So we'll probably won't use this exact one, but we will be binding this thing to our MT4 radio. Pulling the buggy out here, now you can kind of get an idea of the size. Again, this is 10th scale, so we're running standard 10th scale tires. Pull the body off, you can see the layout. Battery on one side, all electronics on the other. That's to give you some, hopefully some really good balance. You don't want to have all the weight on one side. A warning tag here, letting me know that the max input is going to be a two cell lipo or eight cell nicomata hydrate if you care to go with that. This is always uh, interesting to explain to people that are getting into 2.4 that in the past have had the 27 megahertz radios. You want to get away from that really long antenna so you upgrade and some of the 2.4 radios come with this really long antenna and people want to know why. Well this is just right here a length of coax cable. It's just an extension. Think of it as something that allows you to run this wherever you like. If you've got a big truck, you have to mount the receiver in a certain spot, but the antenna tube has to be somewhere else. This is just an extension, coax cable. It's not an active part of the antenna. The only part of the antenna that actually receives is this little bit right here. So this is what's important. This has to stay perfectly straight. You want this in the tube. Just this inch and a half is all it has to stick up. I can coil up this coax part of it, get it out of the way. doesn't matter. It's not going to affect anything, not going to affect range. It's just there to give you more length. Some receivers will come with really short antennas, and the, this length will be really short too. Just depends on the manufacturer. So if you have a 2.4 radio, you have an antenna this long, don't cut it. If you cut it, it won't work. Don't worry about this having to be in the tube. You just need this little spot. So our antenna is not even going to poke up out of the body. I'm just going to coil this up and get it out of the way. Looking at what we have for our power system, this is a 3900 kV. They're calling it a ripper motor. Obviously, it's brushless. Speed controller, I believe, is a... Looks like it's going to be a 40 or 80 amp speed controller. I'll have to look up the specs here. I'll put it in the description. It's fully heat synced, which is nice. The motor mount is also heat synced. You can see that there. The motor mount has some fins on it, so it's going to help dissipate heat. Drive line, uh, of course, all wheel drive. It's shaft driven. We have an adjustable slipper clutch in the center. It's a twin plate slipper clutch running 48 pitch spur gear. Aluminum center shaft. In the front, we have steel CVDs on the outside. Dog bones on the inside. These are fluid filled gear diffs front and rear. Nice to see that. Metal gear diffs. They'll handle all the power of the brushless motor, no problem. 
from the box, they told me they're interchangeable. So it'll be, you know, parts are easier to come by that way. Same thing on the rear. We got CVDs and dog bones on the inside. All the turnbuckles are adjustable, so you can tweak all your suspension. The shocks, these are plastic body, some aluminum caps on top. Oil-filled shocks, of course, these are pre-filled for us. Looks like I got a nice rate in there, thicker than the standard 30 weight that you usually get, which is nice. This buggy should be pretty planted. Our track, our local track, is pretty smooth, high bite, so you don't need really thin fluid. I like to feel that out of the factory. Other than that, I do see that there are mounts for optional sway bars, so I can get a full sway bar set up in this front and rear. The front pin retainer is aluminum, looks to be about 3 millimeters thick. Same with the rear, aluminum. That's going to give you a lot of durability. You come in and hit something, especially on buggies that don't have any functioning bumpers. You hit something on that arm, that aluminum plate's taking the hit, so it should help prevent broken parts. And then we have caster and steering block set up. Instead of twin pivot balls, your standard caster and steering block. Twin bell crank steering system. This has ball bearings throughout. I can see them from here. So you know it's going to be smooth. It's going to be direct, constant power to the steering. The servo that's included, 1903 ASRC servo, like any other ready to run servo out there. Steering saver, the servo saver for steering is right on the servo. It's got a metal collet. Some people may like or dislike that. Just depends on what you, what you uh, have in the past and what you like to work on. Flipping her over just to see how it's set up here. Got a little skid plate on the front. Standard cooling holes for the battery here. Looks like if you remove this little hatch, you can get to the rear diff to grease it up. I'm guessing same thing for this front one as well. Nice to see that. Other than that, you know, the beauty of these little buggies is simplicity. There's not really a whole lot going on here, which is what you want. You want simplicity. So that is the double XB Sparrowhawk. Obviously, we're going to get some running videos for you guys. We've uploaded a, a bunch of them for you guys in the last few weeks. We hope you enjoy those. If you have any questions about this buggy, I have some questions about it. I can't wait to run it and find, find out. Feel free to comment on down below. If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button up top. And while you're at it, check out our website, rcnightmare.com. Thanks for watching this video, guys. We'll see you next time.